to Maxed Out Man, helping you become the man you were made to be. Hey guys, it's Kevin Davis from Maxed Out Man. This is episode number 47. I'm here with kind of one of my business heroes and also somebody that I look up to from a life standpoint. Uh, I appreciate him a lot. Mike McCallowitz, he wrote a book called Profit First that I got into uh, way back 10 or 12 years ago, plus a toilet paper entrepreneur and a whole slew of business books. But, you know, we're, we're actually here recording from Cancun. I'm sitting here in my hotel room. We just finished another podcast that is specific to business for my Detailers Roadmap Cruise Control podcast. And this one is for Maxed Out Man. We're going to be talking about less business, more life. Um, cause I, it, I follow you online. I see what you put out there and I'm, I'm interested in kind of see the, the man behind the books, so to speak, yeah. you know? Yeah. So if you want, just give me kind of a little bit of your background and you can give the business background, your family background, whatever you want to provide there, just to put us a little bit into context. Sure. Sure. It's good to be with you, Kevin. Um, I am a author and uh, a small business author. I've written now 11 books and it's my absolute passion is to investigate what makes a business run successfully, deploy it. I also own businesses, my own businesses. Once I have a proven model, then codify or document it and put it into a book. That's what I love to do. Uh, I'm on a mission. Actually, I'll show you, see if I can swing my camera to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. So I have it. This is my office. Um, but whoops, I just unplugged my camera for a second. This is my office at work, but I also have one at home. I have that everywhere. It's, it's a purpose. Um, I am married. I have three children. All are out of the house. Well, one's still in college, but he's he's heading out soon. Uh, and one just got married. My oldest got married, so that was cool. And uh, and one pooch who I like to go hiking with. <laughs> nice. So you've been married for what twenty six years? I think you just yeah yeah twenty six years going, going and seeing Stonehenge and all, like I'm you know I feel like I'm stalking you online. Well, but... yeah, because I pump it online. <laughs> yeah, I, I do put it online. Yeah, we, my wife and I just, we did a tour of England, but you know what's nice is with our children, all uh, adults, that my wife and I can travel together when I do speaking gigs. So I did a tour in Australia, but also in the UK and in the Netherlands. So I told my wife, which ones do you want to go to? And she's like, I'm in for the UK. And so we spent a week out there seeing all the highlights. It was an incredible trip. Yeah. And just, do you find, so how are you, how do you, in, first of all, if you still have kids at home and you're worried about what it's like being an empty nester, let me just say, it's the best thing ever. I, I don't care what it. anybody says. I, I do mean, a I hack for that. <laughs> so I, I'm in a, I was in a men's group and um, I asked these guys, what we do is, is you can bring any concepts to the table and we have a discussion around it. So I said, as my kids were getting older, I said, the day's coming now that they're all out of the house. And I want my house to be what I call a destination house. I want my children to want to come back, not because of obligation, but because of excitement um, to be with family, but also activity wise. So I said, how do you structure a house like that? I wrote a list of 150 things. I think I've gotten through 98 or 99 things. And sure enough, my kids call up me, hey, do you mind if we come home for the weekend? Or, you know, if I can bring my son just got married, can, I, can my wife and I come up and just spend the weekend there? And uh, it's kind of cool. I get the most joy out of seeing my children interacting with my other children or my wife um, and, and just being a participant as opposed to them coming back and sitting around you know, a coffee table and let's have a conversation all the time approach. Yeah, my kids are. So, is that going to be another book? I hope it's going to be. Another yeah, book. stuff you should I, have I, at your I, house. I, I'll give one of them is a pinball <laughs> machine. By the way, nice. We have a pinball we have a machine. Pool, we have a pool table downstairs. We have a yep. little Xbox set up for car racing and and all that. And our kids, my kids are twenty six and twenty four. They both live. One lives in New York. One lives in Atlanta. And so they're kind of they don't get home probably more than every other Christmas. But uh, yeah, we we definitely value that time. But I love that concept of being able to have, you know, I, I heard it explained to me that a happy home or a, you've done your job if you create a launching pad for your kids as they kind of get ready to go out into that adult yeah. world. But part of that launching pad is if you look at like how SpaceX does it, right? Like they're going to come back. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and and reland in order to take off again in a lot of yeah. in a lot of cases. You know, one thing we did too, my wife and I. I don't know if it happened by design and intent or otherwise we just fell into it. But I noticed my parents, where I grew up, um, when I left the house, my sister left the house. They almost made the bedrooms that we stayed in like shrines. Like it's still Mike's mm, room. Yeah, and it's like that's one thing I don't want to do. Where you have this kind of thing, you just walk by, and and when almost there's almost an obligation. 
So what we did is each room we designated to a new purpose. Um, one became, uh, I, I believe in massage, I think it's very important for health. So we have a masseuse that comes to our house. We have a massage room. Uh, we Another one became a music room. I play guitar, not necessarily well, but I love to play it. And so we have a music room. And so all these rooms now get active use. So the house doesn't feel like an empty space. There's not stuff that you don't, or rooms you don't go into. Everything's mm -hmm. being used. Um, and they quickly can be converted into guest rooms, each room in case we have guests over. My my buddies from college all came this past weekend to watch our our football team lose, but uh, they all came up and every guest room was filled and we had a great party. So that's, that's, that's funny. It's funny how parallel our lives are. Cause we literally created one of the bedrooms now is our massage room slash um, couple room. Let's just say like, it's a, it's a room that is designated away from the dogs away from okay. everything else so that we can kind of have, you know, this is like a yeah. environment. Yeah. So we got a, I have a massage table in there and, you know, just time to spend time together in there that yeah. doesn't involve a room that has a TV and all that stuff. So I yeah, love yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and I I've actually talked about getting a massage table as a guy like the, and actually learning how to do real massages for your wife that don't involve in an ulterior motive. Yeah, like yeah, we, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and so I love bringing, you know, bringing a professional is, you know, is the next best thing or, or the better thing, I guess, depending on, depending on your skill set. But, and then one of our rooms is a photography room for my wife to photograph. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, bait, the practice of hobby or skill. Photograph. You yeah. know, the, the thing I love most I found is a sauna, or it's actually mm. properly pronounced a sauna, uh, sauna, but I like to say sauna. We got one for our house and, um, I have a gym too at home and that sauna is amazing for that couple time. So my wife and I will go in it. You can't bring a phone in. It's too hot. Mm. Um, and there's no, there's no TV. There's no nothing. There's no distraction. And you're sitting there face to face. Uh, and, and the, the heat is on and it's hard to even, uh, do anything, but have a, a mild conversation. It's just too intense. And I think, as a couple, you know, my wife and I, uh, it's, it's often eat on the fly. We don't sit down for a formal dinner. If we do, it's kind of gobbled down. But the sauna is a good hour. You know, we hop in and out and take the cold showers. But it's an hour of just face-to-face -face time and, and great conversation. I love that thing. That's, yeah, I have a little sauna in my in the basement, um, just Perfect. kind of an infrared kind of thing. But I oh, want yeah, to yeah, build, yeah. I, I want to get like a, a bigger one. So I love that idea. Yeah, we have the rock Michelle. one. You pour the water oh, over. Okay, and... get the yeah, like traditional uh, Norwegian or Nor whatever, like a Norwegian yeah. one. We we even, there's these Norwegian hats we have. We both wear them. <laughs> we look ridiculous, but it actually helps with the sauna. So there you go. That's awesome. Yeah, I heard. I think it's like ninety something percent of the households in Norway have uh, a sauna at the house. Something it's this huge. That could be completely wrong. But and it may not. It may be a different Scandinavian country. But the the point still, there is a country in Scandinavia that has a huge. It's like having a bathroom in your house. Like they just have them. You got to have it. I wouldn't be surprised. It's it is so healthy. Um, you, you know all the reports coming in from it, and and I, I feel it when I do it. Yeah, your pores open. It cleans that out. But the real health is cardiovascular. When you go in there, you feel your your um, heart rate amplifying and going up you can feel it and then you go through a cooling process and i there's no question i sleep better as a result of this and that's a health benefit too is quality sleep so yeah a lot of times if you're getting up there your your heart rate response like i'll watch it if you go in the sauna and my sauna is not you know 180 degrees probably like the one that you guys have but it's it's your heart rate response is essentially the same as doing yeah. actual cardio. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a, uh, it, it's kind of a, it's a great thing. Now, are you a cold plunge guy too? Well, we have a cold shower, so not cold plunge. Um, I, I guess I would do that, but I still don't really have an appropriate space for that to work. And I don't know if I'd maintain it well, but a cold shower and, and you know, shower drops down to 50 degrees, which is, is <laughs> it doesn't sound cold. It's, That's cold. cold. it's cold. But in the, in the cool months right now, it's November when we're doing this, it was, it was 30 degrees out this morning and you hit the shower on cold. Ha! Oh, is it intense? And the funny thing is once the water clears through the pipes and just pure cold water coming in, it's actually warmer than the initial burst because the cool outside ambient temperature. So it's wow, intense. Yeah. That's our, our well water comes out at 51 degrees. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. we, we, we have a big bathtub and we actually use that for our cold plunge because it's like 51 degrees. The difference between 51 and 54 is amazing like you wouldn't think that three degrees is that big a difference but like oh, yeah. i can tell if we let it 
So if like I do the cold or wife does a cold plunge in the morning, we let the water sit for the afternoon and it's a little bit warmer. It's like, man, that feels that's way warmer than it. Than Isn't it that was. weird? <laughs> yeah. We we also have a hot tub, which is also another good investment. Uh, a mm-hmm. little technique for for gatherings. Uh, a friend told me, he's like, get a hot tub, but get one that is over capacity in regards to number of people. So if you expect two of you will be in there, get one that's four. If you expect four or five, get one that's eight. So we have an eight person hot tub. And why it's important is it's so big that no one's feet touch. There's no ickiness. You just, you know, (laughs) my college buddies were all in there. No one's touching, um, (laughs) but we can hang out comfortably. In the hot tub, you know, we set to 99 or hundred degrees. You could be in there for hours. You go up to 103, 104, 15 minutes sweating. It's amazing yeah. how a few degrees have a huge effect. Yeah, we do 104 on ours, but it's also, you know, it's 30. It's, you know, we'll go out there when it's zero or 10 below zero or whatever, as long as the wind is not blowing, because we're in Montana. So it's, uh, Ooh, it's super That gets cold super, there. Yeah, super cold. We'll get to like 40 below, but we don't go out in the hot tub when it's 40 below. Yeah. Uh, for sure. So I'm curious, you know, you're, you you are a fit guy. Like obviously you're, you're talking about your fitness and how does your fitness level, you're a successful business person, you travel, you great marriage, all these things. How does fitness play a role in that? I think it's, uh, I think it's foundational and so much so that, uh, I believe there's a direct correlation between our fitness and our business success. I think there's a direct correlation between our fitness and our marital success our fitness and and everything uh, because, you know, we're in our body all the time uh, and our body needs to perform. Uh, so for me, it's, it's regimented. I work out pretty religiously five times a week. I do take a break usually during weekends, but not always. If I miss a Thursday workout, cause I'm on a flight, it, it has to happen Saturday. And what I do is I oscillate. So today was cardio day. Today I did the rowing machine. Uh, a, a hit version of it where you go slow and you crank. Mm, yep. and, then, and then after that, I did some boxing today. Um, tomorrow will be just pure weight room. Unfortunately, it's lower body. And the only reason I say unfortunately is I'm so sore from my last lower body. I'm not looking forward to it, but I have to do it. Squats and reverse lunges and stuff. And then um, the other weightlifting days are um, you know, upper body. I think also I found for me is adding variety in. So in a little warmer months, I'll, I'll go out for like long bike rides. Um, and my, when my, and I'll set these absurd goals. So one of my favorite things to do is I have a mountain bike, but I'll take it on the road, but where we live, there's always like road bikers and they're all wearing that same cheesy spandex <laughs> outfit with their helmets. They look like they're in star Wars, you know? Yeah, yeah. And they're all like, they're like, I don't know what's going on with those weirdos, but they're doing a thing. If I spot them, I will do everything I can to pass them because there's nothing more embarrassing for them than some dude on a mountain bike in cutoff shorts, uh, a ripped shirt that goes blown, blown by. And so this is true. Last time I did it, I saw these guys come in and I positioned myself. I got them behind them. I was pacing, pacing. And then we were about to hit a downhill. I'm like, this is my opportunity. I go by, I go around them into the road a little bit. And I go, <laughs> and the guy's like, <laughs> and I pass by my mountain bike. I cracked as hard as I could for maybe another, maybe a quarter mile, but I was exhausted. So I, I saw, thank God, there was a little trail. I went down this trail <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like, oh, like this. And oh. then they went by, but uh, it's a good, good workout when you try to embarrass other people, I guess. That's right. Well, it's, and just to be able to compete, right? Like there's a yeah. competitive nature. We were at a trade show last week and, and I kind of have this reputation for doing push-ups. Yeah. I do I do my age in push-ups every year on my birthday. That's kind of my thing that I do for my birthday. But then I just do push-ups a lot. Like I've done the 22 push-up challenge for you know suicide awareness oh, for veterans and all What's these the 22 things. push-up challenge? I never heard of it. So it basically it's you do so it, the statistic unfortunately is not 22, but the statistic is 22 veterans take their lives every day. Mm. Uh, and so uh, it's actually closer to 44 or 45. Oh which is a horrendous statistic, but the, the 22 for 22 push-up challenges, you do 22 push-ups a day to raise awareness for 22 days. And so oh, that's, that's, that, cool. that's kind of, that's, so it's just to raise awareness. And the last time I did it, we did, I did 22 different types of push-ups. So like, you know, handstand push-ups and Bruce Lee push-ups and all these different things. And I actually had an opportunity to do push-ups on the, on the wing of air force one. Oh no, uh, that's awesome. Not, yeah, not the current one, but but one that Johnson and and Nixon actually used. It's at the Museum of Flight in Seattle. Anyway, so but wow. 
but one of the things that one that's one of the things that motivates me. We were at SEMA, which is a huge trade show for the audience. Yeah, I know industry. SEMA. I've been there. So last week we were there and I'm doing content for one of my brands and I'm doing these podcasts. And so I'm in the middle of this this interview that we're doing. He's like, Hey, you want to do some push ups? And so we ripped out, did push ups, and he's a boxer. He's about twelve years younger than me. We did I got to fifty eight and I was just out. I was I was also sick that day. And he was like 65, 66. I was like, dude, I'm out, you know? So, yeah. but to be able to drop and do push-ups. DA push-ups. Like, yeah, something like that. So, you know, all that to say, being able to have that competitive spirit and to use your physicality yeah. for that. And it was funny because we looked up, there's like 50 people standing around watching us, watching us do this. We got it on video. It was, it was super cool. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a big deal. And I'm 52 years old now. Um, I've noticed in the fifth the people who are in their fifties, now there's this rapid decline. I remember when, you know, in my twenties, everyone looked like they're in their twenties and their thirties, everyone did and forties, but fifties, I see people that look much, much older and people who look younger and I, it's constantly attributed to their diet and their exercise. Like that's the only common denominator and, and avoiding things like, you know, smoking. Um, but I see it and I'm like, okay, I, I know we are on the down. I'm on the downside of of aging now. Like like your body. Well, I'll be 51 in December, so I'm not. That oh, far welcome back, to the so. club, bro. <laughs> so on the the downside, but um, I'm doing everything I can to to make that slow as possible. Yeah. So nutrition and exercise and rest and uh, you know all of that and travel. Yeah. Travel. You travel a lot. A I lot. travel quite a bit, and that's a huge challenge. But there's two things I look for when I look for a hotel. First of all. I love free breakfast just because it's, I, I eat breakfast every day. So that's, that's good. And then the gym, right? Like we're at this resort. There's a really good gym here at the resort. So everybody else is out drinking by the pool. I'll probably go do a workout. Yeah, so it that. just becomes like, it just becomes part of your life. Right. I, uh, so I found like Hampton, I stayed at a Hampton Inn, which is the low end Marriott, but they always have a clean gym with free weights and some kind of uh, cardio stuff. But what I've noticed is they're never out of order. If their machines break, they're fixing or replacing them. I've gone to other places where it's like out of order, not working. Um, the second thing is they have a free breakfast, but they serve whole uh, boiled eggs, which mm -hmm. is the best for me is the best breakfast. Fire down three eggs or four eggs. My God, you got your protein. Um, they have fruit there. Um, so I, I'm very similar. And, and that's what I look for. Yeah. Being able to do travel. I mean, travel is when we travel and we like, you know, we're here, there's room service and all that stuff. And we still keep it moderate. But when we eat out, I feel like, how, how do people do this, this all the time? Like, how do you, when you, you know, you eat out, you kind of overindulge or whatever, and you just feel like crap. I'm thinking to myself, there are people that feel this way all the time. All the time. It's just, I know. It's, just, I know. <laughs> it's just crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the same way. So I'm curious about, so you went through, you know, we've all gone through ups and downs in our marriage, ups, ups and downs in business, especially one of the things my wife and I talk about a lot. She's, she was a stay at home mom. Um, she, we, she was in PR and took quote unquote early retirement when I got yeah. my first health club, when I started running my first health club, which was 27 years ago or something like that now. Um, but she talks about that she could support me better, which I completely disagree with. Like she, she feels like, well, I'm not, I'm not contributing to the family or I'm not contributing oh, financially or, yeah. or any of those things. And so I'm curious, which I say that's completely BS. First of yeah. all, I wouldn't have a business at all without you. Like that's, there is no me without you. Yeah. And I'm kind of curious to get your, as someone that's super successful travels, been married for 26 years, which is a feat in and of itself these days, <laughs> which is super disappointing. Yeah. Um, but what does kind of that support mechanism look like? How does that relationship get shaped um, as you've gone through these, as you've matured together and kind of grown up together? We got married at 22, 23 also. So it's kind I of that, roll, that bro. Oh, yeah. time, right? So. Oh, yeah. And, and it's funny when my wife and I talk about this, looking back, like, what were we thinking? Um, I was, I knew my wife for six weeks before I proposed to her and wow. we were married within a year. Um, and so when our it's kids too bad are, it didn't oh, work out for you. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. <laughs> our kids are like, I, you know, if my kids meet someone and says, I, I, I remember my son saying he had fallen in love with uh, his now wife after meeting her for a short period. I'm like, dude, it's way too fast, but I, I'm being hypocritical. <laughs> right. um, 
there's no question there's there's peaks and valleys and challenges and 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 struggles and mess ups and all that stuff um my wife has also been a stay-at-home mom our entire marriage she, she did work for a short period of time but she's been a stay-at-home mom and had the same thing she's like i'm not a contributor uh to the family i feel because i was because i was the breadwinner and there wasn't much mm-hmm. bread but oh, i explained explain to her there's how she's contributing is first raising the children and she, you know, having a mom there for the kids. I think there's nothing better. That's how I was raised. I think it's oh, critical. Yeah. critical, but I think the second thing was, um, I really appreciated that she kept us in the social circles. Like she was maintaining relationships with people. And then we go to maybe a new year's party or something like that. I was becoming more and more isolated on my own because all I had to do was work. She kept that around. And looking back now, I have friends that I would not be friends with today because I would have blown them off and disconnected. She actively was maintaining that. And that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, she was a shoulder to cry on. Like, you know, th- we, we went through some really dark financial periods and coming home um, and even becoming an author. When I first wrote my first book, it was after this financial collapse. And like, I don't, I don't know what to do, but I feel called to be an author. And uh, she said, "You you got if you feel called, you got to do this." She actually became a champion for something that other people are like, "That's crazy." Authors don't make a living, so that's been important. Yeah, and it's not like you. It's not like someone just says, "Hey, here's a here's a couple hundred grand uh, signing bonus," or you know, <laughs> no, geez, all no. that stuff, right? Right? There's no there's no upfronts on on that kind of process. Yeah, and you look at the stats, and they're scary. It's like becoming a musician. Like, yeah, for sure. There's Van Halen, and there's uh, you know, Justin Bieber, there, there's these mega successes, but the vast, vast majority of people don't make it. Um, so having a champion in your corner is a big deal. That was huge. I think also that sauna time, which we was a couch time before that, just getting time to talk, um, has been powerful. And my wife is willing, often the instigator of a, the hard conversations. I don't like I Mike, I felt uncomfortable when you did this. So I'll give you an example. Um, and I hope she's not, if she sees this, doesn't have a problem with me sharing this, but we just refinished our basement. And I always had this dream of, I love sports. So I played sports in college and stuff. And I wanted to have a uh, a, a man cave effectively. I got the mm-hmm. three TVs. I got the shuffleboard. I got all the memorabilia. I got jerseys from my favorite athletes who've signed them. And I remember telling a friend and my wife was there. I said, yeah, I got the man cave and my wife allowed me to do this. And she pulled me aside. She goes, I was really offended by that. I'm like, what? She goes, allowed you to do this? She's like, I supported you in this. I wanted this too. We decided on this. And it's true. She enjoys those activities just as much as I do. Um, so she's willing to have those hard conversations where I think I would have struggled to bring that up, but it'd been this little mm-hmm. gnawing kind of pain that one day it would come out in frustrations that built up. So she's able to nip things in the bud. Uh, and that's been very helpful in our relationship. Yeah, that's there's a couple of things you said that I picked up on that. That in particular, I'll my wife will say, Hey, thanks for letting me do this. I'm like, I don't let you do anything. Like, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. You, you know, we do these things together, we make decisions together. This is something that we we do together. So, that's that's an important that's an important distinction there. But, but having that support for me has been so huge. And, you know, my kids were homeschooled and and we did kind of networking homeschool and all that things. But, I um I always joke to my wife and I say I could probably get us in, invited to the party because I'm gregorious and outgoing and you know funny and witty and all those things and uh, it, but it's only her that gets us invited back because like <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one the, you know at the end of each event I always ask her I'm like I was a lot right was I was I too much was I too much like yeah. I just you know you could kind of get to be too on and so having that support and be able to to really you know build those relationships for sure. Cause you know, I'm, I'm not a normal people person. So if I wouldn't, I play one on the internet as they say, but uh, without that, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, you know, many relationships at all. So that's great. But I want to be respectful of your time. I think this is, um, I love seeing successful men that are successful in so many areas of their life. Mm. And I think that what's funny is that I consider myself successful primarily because of my marriage and my mm. family and my health. And I think if you, what I like to do is kind of distinguish those things to say, hey, I can look at your social. I can look at you right now sitting there and say, this Mike's a happy guy. He's happily married. He's a fit person. 
He and oh, by the way, he's a super successful author, speaker, and and business guy, right? Like those. I think so many men, when you ask them who they are, they tell you what they do. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I just, I really admire you. I really appreciate you taking. Oh, the time thanks. To be here. Yeah, that I'm, I'm trying to strike that balance. Uh, far from perfect, far from perfect, but, but I do feel happiness emanates not from business success alone. It's, it's, it's facilitated through all of this stuff. That, that balance. Right, for sure. So I want uh, people. I know you. So you got tons of books. We didn't talk really about business stuff, but that's primarily what you do. So if you, if people want to find you, learn more about what you've done. You've got a new book coming out that's coming out probably right yeah. before this airs or right after this airs. Yeah. So uh, yeah. let us know how to get that stuff. So the new book I have coming out called is called All In. It's about leadership. Um, so it doesn't necessarily translate into what we were talking about directly, but it's about business leadership. Um, all of my work is at mikemotorbike.com. That's my website. Um, and I, I showed this before, but I don't use my last name, Michalowicz, because no one can spell it. But if you go to mikemotorbike.com, um, plus there's a little, when you go th- to my site through mikemotorbike.com, you'll see a funny graphic that'll kind of give you a laugh. Right. But go to mikemotorbike.com, all my content, everything I do uh, is there for free. That's awesome. Hey, Mike, thank you very much. I know you're heading to Las Vegas to go do a big event, 1,500 people plus. So that'll be awesome for you right. to share that. And uh, yeah, appreciate you taking the time. Kevin, thank you so much. Enjoy Cancun. Oh, thank you. I will. Hey, Mike, I appreciate that. I'm going to, I won't end the call. I'll just, I'll just finish this later, but thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Um, I know you're, you're a busy man. So I, oh. you know, I can't, I can't thank you very enough for doing both podcasts. Oh, so dude, it's my pleasure. Th- thanks for having me. Um, I appreciate you. Yeah. If you decide to uh, write a fitness book uh, and a marriage book, you know, let me know. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll do it together. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We'll, we, yeah, we'll do it. All right, brother. Be well. All right. Travel safe. We'll see you. Thank you, man. If you're looking to really maximize your life and become the man you were made to be, Head over to maxedoutman.com and get your journey started today.